What's up, everybody? Welcome back. We're doing it again. That's what we do. We do these every week. It's a little Filmstruck Film Club for you. I got my boy Groot here, and it's me again, Carson. Maybe you've been here before, maybe you haven't. But we do watch a movie every week, and every week I do one of these, and then we watch another one. So if you're not following Filmstruck Film Club on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, uh, then you're missing all, all of this stuff, and I'm, I'm not talking to you. You're not listening to this right now. But it is the tail end of October. We're almost to Halloween, and we've been watching a lot of uh, scary movies. It's been fun. Uh, I got some villains up here, which is exciting. I got Jason and Freddy and Dr. Evil and Joker's even peeking out down here. So, you know, I'm decorating. But we watched a great, uh, a great scary movie this week. It's not even really that scary. Just putting that out there ahead of time. But uh, we did watch a Swedish film this week. It's not even that old. It's from 2008. And it's by... <clears throat> it's directed by Tomas Alfredsson. 2008's Let the Right One In. And this movie was really cool. I've been looking to see it for a while, but I, I had always kind of been like, I hear this is a good movie. I see that it has good reviews. It has like a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. But I, I, for whatever reason, I just always resisted. Even they, they made a remake in English before I ever got a chance to see this. And even that is now like 11 years old. So I've just, for whatever reason, put this movie out for a long time. And I'm really glad that I finally got around to watching it because it's really good. Uh, I did say it's not really that scary, because it's not really that scary. There's a couple parts where the vampire, yes, it's about vampires, well, at least one vampire. Um, and so I knew that there was going to be some of that. And, and some of those scenes where she feeds is, you know, it's pretty good. It's pretty good gory stuff, but not too gory. Um, it, since it's in Sweden, right, and it's in, I guess, the wintertime, or it's just always snowy in Sweden. Uh, there's this beautiful white snowy landscape all the time. So then when these like pops of red happen, it's pretty exciting. Not gonna lie. Um, but this movie, uh, I didn't know this, but Empire Magazine. Do you know anything about Empire Magazine? It's a pretty cool publication. Uh, great podcast too, by the way. But they named this the movie of the year. And they don't typically do films not in the English language for their favorite movie of the year. So it was kind of cool that they did that. Um, but yeah, I mean, what, what, what can I even say about this? It's based off a book that I didn't read, uh, but I bet that book is pretty good. Um, yeah, we follow little Oscar. He's a, he's a really kind of cool kid. Uh, he's got a great haircut. Uh, great fucking haircut. Uh, but he's, you know, he's a lonely kid. He gets bullied a lot, and the bullies are total assholes. They seem right out of, like, Stephen King bully territory. Um... But yeah, you know, they're just terrible kids. And then, of course, Oscar meets Ellie, uh, this girl who, who lives nearby. Um, and I'm going to get into some spoilers. So if you haven't watched the movie, I don't want to ruin it for you. But she's like, not a she. What you know about that? Um, she was, it's like not expressly said in the movie. There is a, a brief moment. There's a shot where you see this. Oscar catches her changing, right? And we see that she's had some kind of mutilation happened to her over the years. Uh, and so she is actually a, a boy who has been, uh, oh God, that's such a rough visual. I did it twice. Uh, I forget, castrated. Thank you. That's the word we're looking for. But so this kid was turned into a vampire at 12 years old. And so now this androgynous looking kid kind of lives in the world as a girl, uh, even though wasn't always a girl. Um, there are some pretty scary scenes where, like, we see her as her, like, 200-year-old self, but even then she only looks like she's, you know, in her 40s or 50s or something. But, like, it's very cleverly edited where all of a sudden she'll kind of look up and look a little older. And Oscar always, he doesn't judge her too much, which I really appreciate. It, it makes for quite a nice friendship. They have a really beautiful friendship in this, in this whole movie. You do get a sense that Oscar's got a little bit of a crush on her, and so there's this kind of, like... It's a new take on the coming-of-age uh, innocent romance, you know, because she's, what, 200 years his senior, but they're about the same age. And uh, he, you know, he finds a nice friend who then, there's this really cool scene. We're just going to talk about this real quick where she kind of, like, wants him to, to stand up for himself a little bit and be a little bit more like me. And so that leads to a really great 
bloody ending. But uh, the, this this was one of the things I liked about the movie a lot was uh, it really kind of pays tribute to a lot of the set in stone vampire folklore. We get to see how daylight affects them, how they have to feed all the time with human blood. There's some really great sequences where like her caretaker, I didn't get the sense that it was the dad, but her like caretaker guy is out trying to collect blood. And so he's like draining people and it's this whole process with this kid. And I, it was some of like the, the best filmmaking in the whole movie was just like the, the time that we take with this guy getting his kit all set up. And of course that gets fucked up too, but in a fun way. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't have anything to add. Like if you've seen the movie, you know, if you haven't seen the movie, you should do what I did and just finally watch it. Especially now we're in spooky season. It's not too scary a pick, but it's also a really well-made movie. Uh, like all the shots are great. It's the same DP who works with Christopher Nolan all the time. So like, it's just got a really great look to it. Uh, I am curious to, to see the sequel. It's well reviewed, or not the sequel, pardon me, the, the remake, the English language remake. It's well reviewed. I hear that it is maybe scarier than the Swedish one, but uh, from all the reading I did and from watching it with my own eyes, the Swedish film let the right one in is very, very good and, and is tame enough uh, for if you don't mind just like the sight of a little bit of blood, you're going to get a really like tender friendship, romance, coming of age, sweet kids in the 80s vampire movie it's great uh so yeah i don't know if I th we might be done with the spooky movies i don't know we're gonna run out of time all of a sudden halloween will come and go and we might well who knows we'll pick something cool tomorrow make sure that you're following filmstruck film club so that we can we can be on this page together but um yeah i hope you're enjoying your you know our, our transition into uh, our fall season Gonna have some nice things to kind of get us through fall and winter. I like to pick a little more wholesome -y movies. October is kind of like the big... Anyway, I'll quit explaining myself. You guys enjoy whatever you wind up doing, but hopefully you catch a little bit of time to watch one of these movies. Um, feel free to go check out the old ones. If, you, if you're brand new to this, there's like almost 200 movies that we've watched. So there's a ton of, that you could do to catch up and let me know what you think. Let me know what you thought about the films. Let me know what some of your favorite ones you've seen in the club are. Uh, maybe we'll revisit those directors. But yeah, keep it real. Happy Halloween. See you later. Groot, say goodbye. He said I am Groot.